here, and this is step three for our currency redesign project. So at this point, you should have your type overlay done. I'm sorry, your uh, money overlay done. And you should see all of these layers here in your project. Now, this is a reteaching of something you already did in your type overlay project, which is merging your layers. So you're going to click your top layer, and then you're going to shift, click your bottom layer, so that all the layers in between are selected. Then you are either going to go up to layer, and you can say merge layers, but on the right you can see that there's a command E right there. So you know I'm a big fan of key commands because they make things faster. So I'm just going to do this and command E. And all of a sudden, boop, you have one image. Your layers have been condensed or merged into one image. So at this point, now you can select your subject. Now the other day I was talking about Photoshop and the update, uh, which now enables you to select the subject up here. So you can see this is awesome. <clears throat> now it's gonna work really well if you have a lot of contrast around your figure and the background. Now you can see the gradient map that I chose for Nelson Mandela does not have a lot of contrast. So in my practice, when I did this the first time, it had a hard time seeing the separation between the suit and the background. So you're gonna see what I mean in a minute. So I'm gonna to go to Select Subject. Remember, you're not gonna have this option unless you go to your Selection Tool over here on the left, your Quick Selection. So if you hold that down, those are all the things that are in this tool panel. So you have your Object Selection, Quick Selection, Magic Wand. We've never covered the Magic Wand. That's for selecting things by color. So there's your Quick Selection. Now you're gonna to go to Select Subject, and it's gonna think and select only the right side of Nelson Mandela. So close. Thank you, Photoshop. Okay, now I clicked uh, to try to include more, <clears throat> and it, it did an over-selection. So at that point, now I'm going to go to Select and Mask. Now this is the one that you guys are familiar with. If you get into this workspace and you don't have a red, don't worry about it. That's just because your view mode is not set to overlay. Right, It could look like this, which looks like nothing. Marching ants, which is not that helpful. Overlay, that's my favorite. Okay, You could do black and white, but yeah, then you can't see your image. <clears throat> so right here, I am going to make sure it's on my paintbrush tool. Now remember, this one up here, that's for the hair. So if you're doing hair, you can use your Refine Edge brush tool. That works really well for hair. But if you're just doing your subject, go ahead and use your paintbrush tool. Now I am going to make sure that it's my brush is set to minus because I'm subtracting from my selection. Remember, I had an over selection. Now I'm just simply painting in the parts that I was like, no, I did not mean to select that Photoshop. Okay, now your mouse is going to work better. I have my finger right now and it's a little awkward. The best is if you're on the iPad and you have like an Apple pencil. Oh, that works like a dream. Okay. I'm going to zoom in, I'll go back to my brush, and now I notice that that's okay, but I almost like over subtracted. I can see his ear is peeking through here. So I'm going to go to my plus and paint in his ear a little bit more. All right, let's see how that looks. It's okay. A little more. All right, hair looks okay, everything else decent. Okay, wait, let me move over here a little bit. So I'm gonna say okay when I'm all done. <clears throat> now you can see my selection is active. Now, my favorite thing, all you do is you hit Command J and that will duplicate, yes, your layer, remember we command J to duplicate layer, but really command J just duplicates anything that's selected. So I had a selection and if I hit command J it duplicates just that selection, yes, without the background. 
So now I'm going to delete my background. And now you can kind of see where my selection was not perfect. So you may want to go back in then and redo your selection just to make sure. So I'm going to add this back in right here around his face. Okay, say okay. Command J. Then I'm going to delete my background layer and there you have just this figure with a transparent background. Now, this is what we want to get to because we want to drag this into Illustrator with a transparent background. Otherwise, you're going to have a square with a background. And you can do that if you want it to look like that in your project or for some reason you want your figure in a, a frame somehow. That's okay, but it has to work. So for me, I don't want my figure in a frame. I'm just wanting the figure with nothing around it. So I'm going to hit uh, Control. So Control is different from Command. Command is the little symbol that looks like a square flower. Control is just the carrot uh, that is pointing upwards. And I'm going to go to uh, Quick Export as PNG. Or you can do Export as. That also gives you an option for a PNG. And it is going to say layer one. I'm just going to say Nelson Mandela. Save to my desktop. Hit save. And that's all I do. Okay, now I'm going to go to Illustrator. This is Illustrator. If you did step two, you should have a basic layout of Illustrator and your symbol, okay? Now I'm going to go to File place. There he is. And it's going to be real big. Okay, now you can see I did this in my practice already. So when I zoom out, and again, that's command minus or command plus, or you can hit Z and zoom in and out that way too. That works. Okay. I'm going to go to my selection tool over here. Remember also that is the key command shortcut V. Now hold my shift key down. Because Photoshop and Illustrator, one of the differences is that in Photoshop, you don't have to hold your shift key down when you're resizing something because it will constrain your proportions automatically, which means keep everything um, the right size ratio so it won't look stretched out. Illustrator does not do that. So you can see if I do this with no shift, Nelson's not looking so good. But if I hit shift, now it's perfectly constrained in proportions. So again, command zero. And now I'm going to place him on my image and I see his head is a little bit cut off and that's fine, but I want everything to be visible. Okay, now you might notice that I changed my color scheme to match my gradient map, which I did on purpose, and I want to show you how to do that. So there he is, and these are my stripes from yesterday, or the other video. Now I want to change my symbol colors to match my color scheme here. So all I'm going to do is select one of my boxes, I'm going to hit I for eyedropper tool. And then I'm going to go over here and just click on the color that I want it to change to. And magically, whatever is selected changes to the color where my eyedropper was. Okay? So I'm going to do, again, same thing. Now these are grouped, right? So over here you can ungroup to make sure that you are only selecting one piece at a time. Ungroup. Ungroup and repeat the same process. So select this, hit I for eyedropper, come over here, click on your whatever color you're picking up, and rinse and repeat. Okay. So that is the basic tools. Now this is not finished, but that is the purpose of the video is to show you the tools so that you have them in your toolbox so that now you can do whatever your design is um, successfully.
The last thing I'm going to show you today is how to put text in. So you're going to go to your type tool. You're going to drag a box wherever you want it. It's going to do fill with that placeholder text. Remember that. And I'm going to hit just five because it's going to be five. Okay. Now I'm going to select it and then I'm going to go to fill and use that same color. Uh, actually, I think I'm going to do the gold. Let's do the gold instead. That doesn't look so good. Okay, I... There we go. And so I picked up the gold background, and now my five is uh, that same gold. However, you can't see part of it, so I have to make a stroke on it. So I'm going to hit over here my stroke, and I'm going to go over to my swatches and make it that... Uh, burgundy almost color my properties and I want to make my stroke heavier so I'm going to make it heavier that's good and now um, I have a five okay now let's say I want to make the five thicker but only in one area right I want to make it my own I'm going to go to, over here in my properties panel to create outlines my properties panel looks terrible right now. I don't know why. And that turns your letter into an outline. Now I'm moving through this kind of quickly because we already did this uh, with our type poster project. Now I'm going to go to my direct selection, zoom in a little bit more so I have more control. And I'm just going to select the few anchor points that I want to make bigger. And I'm just going to use my arrow keys drag it out and then this one like that and I do like this but like the curve isn't so good here so I can really um, be fussy with this and just make it look how I want it to these anchor points can be very um, tricky to work with like one anchor point can really make a big difference as to how perfect your curve is all right there we go I'm pretty happy with that so I'm gonna leave that there and now you have the tools that you need for step three